y'all, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here. I'm uh, trying to get myself cranked up and get in the spirit, you know, of things that's uh, required this time of year. So I put on my Aunt Peggy's uh, Sterling Silver Christmas tree. I've seen her wear this, uh, gosh, I don't know, 30 or 40 years. And I've always just loved it. And uh, like one or two Christmases ago, I said, you know, the, <laughs> this Sterling Silver Christmas tree, it just gets prettier and prettier to me. So she took it off and she said, here, I want you to have it. So thank you, great, great, <laughs> for my Sterling Christmas tree. And uh, every time I look at it, I'm thinking of Aunt Peggy. All right, let's see, what else have we got going? Um, Teresa, or Broomhilda, as she's affectionately known around here, <laughs> is on vacation. And so there's gonna be somebody else helping me here in the kitchen today besides Eddie. And her name is Casey. <laughs> Come here, Casey. Uh, this pretty little girl has been a part of uh, Paula Dean Enterprise now for how many years? Started in 05 at the restaurant. Yeah, so. 16 up, years? 16 years. It'll be 17 years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And she plays such an integral part uh, in our office day-to-day -day stuff. She's, we couldn't do without Casey. She's one of those sweet things that she's, she, uh, there's no drama with her, no <laughs> drama. And she's just a delight to be around and to work alongside of her. So she's gonna be taking Teresa's place. And <laughs> what'd you tell her, Eddie, when she came in here this morning? Yes, you do I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was something what she had to do if she was going to impersonate <laughs> Teresa. Hey, sure that was a Michael talking. No, it was, it was you. Me. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't something like. Did she bring her favorite broomstick? Or did she... <laughs> <laughs> yes, did you come in riding your broomstick no, this morning? No, I did not. No, I leave that to Teresa. <laughs> no, I think Michael said she has some um, tall, pointy boots she has to fill. <laughs> oh, we tease Teresa unmercifully. But, honey, she gets the job done, doesn't she? She does. She does. <laughs> <laughs> so she's on vacation somewhere. Does anybody have any idea where she is? I don't know. I'm not, she, you know, I want to say she's in the mountains somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yes. So she she's not in town. Yeah. Good, mm -hmm. good. So nope. she's she's getting away from it all <laughs> for a while. Yep. Well, I think we'll make it through, Teresa. We'll miss you, <laughs> but we will make it through because. Uh, Y'all left me in competent hands <laughs> here with Casey. So, um, I have made this before on the show, maybe three times, I don't know. But it's a recipe that I continue to need to show y'all, especially this time of year. Uh, because a lot of people are like me, I think. I serve beef at Christmas. I, I serve turkey and ham at Thanksgiving, but it's beef for Christmas. And uh, I don't have to tell y'all that prices on food has just gotten scandalous. And this is a very expensive piece of meat. And the last thing you wanna do is ruin this piece of meat. So a friend of mine, Ann Hanson, shared this with me, oh gosh, 30, 35 years ago. Uh, and of course, back then, I, it was very few standing rib roast in our kitchen because they were pricey even before prices have gone crazy. But uh, Ann shared with me how she did her standing ribs. And I'm telling you, I put it in the cookbook and I call it a foolproof standing rib roast because it doesn't matter what size your roast is, if you follow these instructions, it will turn out perfect every time. And when I say perfect, uh, I'm gonna be looking for a medium rare on this. So, I had the butcher 
tie this up and I'm cooking it with the bone in because I just love, love the flavor that this bone gives it. Now, your butcher, if you want to have him uh, take the bones off the meat, he can do that and then place them right back and tie them back up. So it's very easy for you to just take the rib bones and slice them in two for people that are bone knowers like me. <laughs> So, this one's tied up nice and tight, and uh, all we're going to do is uh, rub this with house seasoning real good, because we're going to want a kind of a cru salty crust on the outside of it. And I'm using my house seasoning. If you don't have house seasoning, you can just mix up garlic powder onion powder, salt, and black pepper. All right, and I also recommend that you uh, sit your rib out and let it get to room temperature for about an hour. Now, I've got our oven on 375. I think I'm gonna go ahead and let those handles down. Uh, Do you want to uh, refresh people on what your house seasoning? Yeah, is? I just didn't. I just say that. Did you? If they've got uh, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper, okay. you can mix it together. Eddie is just not paying a bit I'm not, attention I'm not, to what actually, I'm saying. I'm not, what are you thinking about? <laughs> actually, I was I was staring out the window. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's daydreaming, y'all. <laughs> He's probably thinking about how much he's got to do still. Right, Eddie? <laughs> I'm not even. Are gonna, you trying to keep an I, eye on the crew? Actually I was looking yeah, I was looking at but I'm not gonna pan over that way. <laughs> what what were you looking at? I was I was looking at what Jason was doing outside. But... <laughs> I have to watch Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to keep an eye on little Jace. <laughs> All right, so we've got our oven preheated to 375 degrees. We're gonna put this in and let it cook at that temperature for one hour. And then I'm gonna cut our oven off. And we are not gonna open the door, not for anything, because it's amazing the heat that can escape with just one opening of your oven. So we don't wanna do that. And about 30 to 45 minutes before you're ready to serve, uh, cut your oven back on. I think it's at 350 that you No, you turn turn the oven back on to 375 and Just let it cook for about 30 more minutes and it should be a perfectly beautiful uh, Standing rib roast now if you like your meat well done, I would say get a chuck roast <laughs> <laughs> You know because this this meat really should be uh, in my way of thinking, medium rare, medium to medium rare. So if, if you can't go that route, just let it cook a little bit longer. Um, so that's it. That's it. We're going to put it in the oven. One hour, we're going to set the uh, timer for Casey. Mm -hmm. Let's see, where is our timer? Right there. Yeah, one hour. Okay. So I'm putting it in this small oven. Oh, that I have to, no, I don't have to. I thought I might have to lower that rack, but it's fine. Okay, so there we go. Uh, it's 11.30 right now. So uh, if I wanted to serve dinner at five o'clock, I would turn the oven back on at four. But do not open that door. Do not open your door. So, uh, I mean, it's really so, so easy. So that's it for that. So we'll be back and look at that roast in about four or five hours, right? Yep. I just got to make sure that I cut that temperature off so it won't overcook. I think our timer is fixing to go off. Uh, it's been almost an hour. It's hard to believe. We're down to like one minute. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it off since we know it's been an hour. So, okay, everything's off. And we're not gonna open that door no matter how badly we want to see that roast. We are not gonna open that door. Even if the house is on fire, we're not opening that door. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that I'm gonna be serving that prime rib, that standing rib roast in about an hour. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut our oven back on and I'm gonna leave it for 45 minutes at 375. And uh, then we'll finally be able to open that door. But you know what, Casey, I have more people uh, when I'm out and about, mm -hmm. they say that standing mm -hmm. rib roast recipe is incredible mm -hmm. and it works every time. Does it matter the size of it? No, it, it no, goes, goes it doesn't matter. Size. Okay, it doesn't matter. So bake, and the temperature is 375. You want, might want to check mm -hmm. because I don't have my glasses on. I think that's 375. Yeah. I think. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 45. Minutes? Yes, 30 to 45 minutes will. We'll pull it out, and you really need to let it stand for 10 or 15 minutes before you carve it. But usually I can't wait that long. <laughs> okay, so I'm about um, maybe 20, 30 minutes away from serving my standing rib roast. So I turned the oven back on. I have just turned it off. And, uh, well, I thought I turned it off. Now, now I've cut it off. <laughs> and I'm fixing to take it out, and it should be a perfect medium rare. It smells wonderful. Doesn't it smell so delicious? Whoa. And it's funny, Eddie. Listen that sizzle. Mm -hmm. It's funny, Eddie, it doesn't, uh, doesn't, matter really what size your roast is so the technique works for everything uh-huh yeah <laughs> it works one size fits all so normally i would uh let this rest for a few minutes but i think i'm gonna go ahead and just slice into it for y'all to see it's gonna be a happy camper. Yes. Okay. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect medium rare. Perfect medium rare. It's so important that we don't ruin that expensive piece of meat. So enjoy your Christmas dinner. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you try this method of cooking that expensive standing rib roast. <laughs> Merry Christmas and love and best dishes. Hey y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video. Love and best dishes, y'all.